Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the A-level maths content. Here we're going through stretching graphs uh, so you can have a go at exercise 4f. So let's compare the two functions again. We're starting with y equals x squared plus 2x. Previously we worked out the coordinates of this through um, just plugging in different x values and we plotted the graph and it looked roughly like this. Now let's consider what we get when we plot the graph 2, bracket x squared plus 2x. And what you'll notice here is that all of the y coordinates here have doubled. The negative y coordinates have got further into the negative values, and the positive x y values are now double as large. So plotting these coordinates, we get this graph here. So what you can see has happened is that the red graph has stretched outwards or upwards from the x-axis. So we're taking sort of the x-axis here as effectively our center of enlargement. If it's on the bottom, it's stretched downwards by a scale factor of 2. And if it's stretched upwards, then it's stretched upwards by a factor of 2 as well. So consider the x-axis your center of stretching effectively. If it's on the bottom, stretch it downwards. If it's on the top, stretch upwards. Okay, let's now consider what we do, what we get if we double the x coordinates um, and then apply our um, graph here. So for each of the x coordinates, we're going to get these values here. And plotting these graphs here, we're going to get this sort of graph here. Now what you'd expect maybe is something similar to the transformation before in that maybe the y-axis is now our center of stretching and we stretch outwards from the y-axis. But in fact what's happening here is we squish inwards by a factor of a half or stretch outwards by a factor of a half, effectively squishing our graph in by halving all of our coordinates. And that kind of makes sense. If we look at, say, the coordinate of uh, minus 2, 0, this now refers to the coordinate of minus 1, 0, because the minus 1 value now gets doubled in each of the different positions. So now it's minus 2, and now we get our y coordinate of 0. Let's take another example of uh, 2, 8 here. This is now effectively moved to the coordinate 1, 8 because the 1 is going to be doubled first to make a 2, and then it's going to have a y-coordinate of 8. So the 1 has now a y-coordinate of 8. So what we consider this time is that the y-axis is our center of stretching inwards by the inverse of that factor. So if we've uh, doubled all of the positions of our x by 2, we're going to stretch outwards by a factor of a half, uh, effectively squishing it inwards. So once again, you've seen that the transformation inside the brackets has the opposite effect that we would expect if you compare it to the y-axis transformation. It stretches it by a factor of 1 over a rather than just the a value. So in fact, what we're starting to develop here is a pattern that when we do the transformation of the x-axis or with it inside the brackets, the opposite effect is, have, is happening. So this is the case with translations and for stretching as well. Okay. Right, so let's have a go at some questions then. So this time we're going to sketch the graph 9 minus x squared and apply these two transformations. So how do we draw this graph first? Well, let's factorise it, find its roots plot the graph. When x is 0, we get the y-coordinate on the intersection there. And now we've got a chance to um, apply our transformations here. So f of 2x, what's going to happen this time? It's an inside the bracket transformation. Hence, we're going to have horizontal movement. And it's horizontal movement, so therefore it's the opposite of how we'd expect. Maybe you'd expect it to double all of its coordinates and stretch it out by a factor of 2. Wrong. It's the opposite effect. It squishes it inwards by a factor of a half. So what we're going to get here 
the x coordinates have now halved. So they're now at minus 1.5 and 1.5, still the y coordinate of 9 there. So if it's on the left hand side, it squishes it inwards that way. And if it's on the right hand side, it's been squished inwards that way. And what happens with a 2f of x graph? Well, what happens here, it's an outside the bracket transformation. Hence, we have a vertical movement. Anything on the top stretches upwards. Anything on the bottom stretches downwards. So what we're going to get here is this sort of graph here. The minus 3 and 3 don't move because they're on the x-axis. So we stretch it by a factor of 2, but 2 times 0 is 0. We stretch the 9 upwards to an 18, though. So that's how this graph is going to look here. Right, let's have a go at some more graph transformations. Sketch the graph with the equation of this. Hence, sketch the graph with this equation. Uh, notice here how we have uh, doubled every single x value in this equation here. So what we're effectively going to do from here to here is apply the transformation f of 2x. But let's get to the question. So we're going to have intersections at minus 1, 0 and 2 on our cubic graph here because we have 3x components. And what we've got here now is we need to apply the transformation f2 of x, just like it says here. So that means we have horizontal movement because we're inside the bracket and it's opposite land. So we're squishing it inwards by a factor of a half. So we're going to get intersections at minus 0.5 and 1, just like we have here. Okay, let's now have a look at question C. What we've got for question C is just a negative in front of the original f of x function. Now, what this is going to do, uh, what we have known this to do in the past, is that it stretches uh, upwards and downwards from a centre of stretching at the x-axis. But if our stretching is a factor of minus 1, then surely if our y-coordinate is, say, 2, then this is going to become minus 2. So it's effectively going to get reflected over the x-axis. Effectively, it's this type of graph transformation down the bottom here. y equals minus f of x. And this has a reflection in the x-axis. All of those y-coordinates are now going to be the negative value of what those y-coordinates were before. So, for example, let's take a point down here. The negative of this is now going to be positive to make a double negative up here and if we originally have a point up here say 5 then negative of that is now minus 5 so we get our coordinate down here so we reflected it in the x-axis here okay let's now have a look at reflecting in the opposite way so f of x this time is x plus 2 uh, so intersections at minus 2 and 0. Uh, the first type of graph transformation we're looking at is f minus x. So the minus f of x went uh, over the x-axis. I suppose it makes sense for the uh, f of minus x transformation to go over the y-axis. And remember, it's inside the brackets as well. We always know that inside the brackets is horizontal movement. So therefore... What we're going to have in this case here is that all of these negative coordinates are now going to be made positive. So on this side here and this little bit of the graph here is now a negative. So we're going to reflect in the y-axis and get this sort of graph here. Now what about the y equals minus f of x curve? So we're still working back with the red curve here. What we saw before was now all the y-coordinates are going to be negated, so our graph looks um, like it's been reflected over the x-axis. Okay, so another bit for your notes then, y equals minus f of x is a reflection in the x-axis, and as with the blue graph, y equals minus f of x is a reflection in the y-axis. Okay. Right then, let's have a look at the 
next part of the question. Ah, it's your turn. Okay, so have a go at these questions here. Pause the video and see how you get on. Right, well done for pausing the video and having a go at this then. So first part is question A, and how would we sketch this curve here? Well, hopefully you have difference of two squares it, squared it. So in this case here, it's going to look like this sort of graph here going through at 2 and minus 2. Let's now have a look at what happens to the graph transformation of this. So in this first case here, we have an inside the bracket graph transformation. This means we're going to have horizontal movement. It's a 4, and we'd expect it to stretch outwards by a factor of 4, but we know that an inside the bracket transformation is opposite. So in fact, it's going to squish it in by a factor of 4. So it looks something like this. 2 squished in will now be at a half if we've divided it by 4, and this will now be at minus a half. The negative 4 on the y-axis will remain as it was. Okay, so inside the brackets, horizontal movement, and it's the opposite transformation that you would expect. For this graph here, y equals uh, a third of f of x. So in this case here, it's a vertical movement because the transformation is outside the bracket. And in this case here, it's a third. So we're going to squish the graph inwards or stretch it outwards by a third. So really that's... Uh, squishing it inwards. So the minus 4 here will end up at uh, minus 4 thirds, but the minus 2 that it was before and the 2 is going to remain where it is. So let's draw a roughly squished in shape graph to compare it with this graph here. So all of these coordinates have been thirded on the y-axis. Part 3 of this question here is y equals f minus x, and inside the bracket transformation reflects horizontally. So our graph is going to look exactly like it did before. The 2 here is going to reflect over to minus 2, and the minus 2 here is going to reflect over to 2. So we get exactly the same graph as we had for f of x. And for the second graph here, um, a transformation outside the brackets is a vertical movement upwards and downwards. So our graph is going to look something like this. Uh, it's going to have intersections still at minus 2 and 2. This time the 4 will reflect upwards to minus 4 will reflect upwards to 4. So we have our y axis intersection point there. Right, thank you very much for watching the video. Uh, once you've finished, have a go at questions from exercise 4F. Remember, watching this video is only 10% of the learning. Make sure you complete that 100% by having a go at some questions of your own, persevering through the difficult topics, and asking your teacher for help where you need it. Thanks for watching.